Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for December 12th through the 18th, 2022. So as we begin, I'd just like to welcome everyone back to this um, weekly message from the angels and to also welcome anyone who might be new to our community. Um, so this is sort of, um, you know, we're getting close to the holiday season and um, I do believe that I'm going to be um, going for a visit back home um, to see my father um, and my stepmom and other members and friends of the community, um, most likely around the 20th. So, um, and I know just to make you aware of that um, in terms of readings and things like that. Um, and so basically I'll sort of resume any of my readings, um, you know, for after like January, probably the 5th. Um, so, um, if, if, if in fact you're looking um, to get an angel reading with me, um, you could possibly do that this week. Um, but I would think more count on it for January. Um, the um, special offer that I've been providing for this year, because this year is the 10th anniversary year since I've been on YouTube, um, that will go into into January because I think I um, started it in February. So um, just be aware of that. So I don't want anybody to feel like they have to rush um, to take a, advantage of that. Um, <clears throat> And so just be aware that 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 special offer is still available so you can get the first time promotional offer reading um, now or in January um, for a, a session with me. Also, um, if you'd like to contribute anything to my channel, you can go to my a link below um, my PayPal me link. You can find that link and as well as my current website, theangelschool.com, um, the services page to um, book a reading with me. Also, if you haven't done so, make sure that you subscribe um, to my channel and um, like, um, leave comments, and also um, just be aware of community. And for those of you who, your comments are so insightful and just um, I love how certain people even um, just note some of the things that struck them because um, believe it or not I don't even remember half of what I'm saying um, but it's kind of nice to see the points that touched other people and it then um, it gets, so like I know how it impacts me to like sort of see it in that way and be like oh yeah that is a really important point so sharing i would i would hope that <clears throat> in this world of likes and feedback that for us we think about it as advocating um for something that really touches us and for um sharing um, our own personal wisdom um that is being sparked by what is occurring here. So um, it can be many more things and I don't want to limit it to do, um, but I just want to, I think the main purpose would be to be of service to others through your comments. Okay. And boy, if you haven't had an opportunity, um, I did place um, the general uh, monthly angel reading for December, and also I, I provided you with a meditation. So if you haven't, haven't had a chance to look at those, um, that meditation is what I do when I'm guided to do it. 
which is to balance the divine masculine and feminine energies and principles um, <clears throat> within yourself. <clears throat> excuse me. Let me just... Excuse me. I think that's the worst thing to do as a vocalist. Uh, <laughs> but is, you know, you just want to clear your throat. However, um, yes, so let's just take a deep breath together now and just center in our heart spaces. And to just call forth around you the guardians of light that are with you now. And know that there are many guardians of light surrounding you. And you can call upon these guardians of light to touch any facet or area of your life. These guardians of light are your angels and they're with you right now. And you may feel them touching your heart as you call them in. You might feel a sort of a release of pain, emotional pain, agony. As they come through now to enter your heart and enter your body and to touch your third eye as they write sight. And allow them now to heal your perspective your vision of what's possible. Allow them now to open where you have shut off and created ideas of impossibility. Allow them to now touch you and open you up to all possibilities. And they bring you so much love. Just feel your guardians of light around you. Feel them protecting every step you take. And you might feel a little bit of anxiety coming up. I'm feeling some anxiety coming up for people. And I don't know why they're writing USA. And this might be in particular um, the things that are going on right now, the, the fear hype that is just being all sort of, it seems like right now a lot of attention is being given to our fears. Is this somebody's putting a spotlight on it? Now, you know fear doesn't like the spotlight. It wants to hide. It wants to invalidate. It wants to inhibit. It doesn't want to be in the light. And when it does, it really strongly reacts. And so right now, we have to be aware of highlighting fears. Now, they want you to understand, as you probably already know, is that, first of all, your fears are an illusion. And even though your fears are a, a, a viable option, you know, that somebody, um, can calculate or predict that yes, this might, this is going to happen because of this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, and this is happening. But you have to understand that the guardians of light stand everywhere. 
There is not a place in your heart, in your mind, in your life physically, any part of the world where a guardian of light does not stand shielding and warding off our greatest fears. When something that we create is allowed to happen, it is allowed to happen for a reason because all things are do serve the greater good and the greater purpose. And I don't want to really break that down because I want you to know that they're not saying they don't understand the reason behind your fears. They understand what reality means to us and that we have to operate within the reality as we call it, but not to the neglect of the divine reality. And when you access your divine perspective, that vision, that energy has the power to protect, override the outcomes you fear. And even though you might go through it, you will not be marked forever, if you know what I mean by that. Your scars will be minimal. They will allow you only to be transformed in a way that will allow you to prosper and to create prosperity for others. And none of this is done without an agreement between your higher self and the classroom that the universe is unfolding for you. But you are the instrument behind what is unfolding. And don't beat yourself up about your negative thoughts. That's not what they're, they're saying. And we should not expect a, 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 a reality within this human experience that does not have contrast, that does not have challenges, but it's our outlook is that what changes everything about how we experience and how we live our lives, the kind of lives we have and the kind of lives we deserve, that possibility is unlimited. But it requires our faith. And it requires our faith in the divine purpose. These guardians stand before you and over everything. They are sending light, energy, divine energy, praying over everything that you're concerned about, over every idea that comes forth from you, no matter what it is. They are praying over it and helping it to rise to its optimal potential. 
So many of you may be freaking out over a recession. Know that before you pray or worry, your choice, <laughs> that they are the angels, the guardians of light are praying. They have a compassionate voice. That compassionate voice is able on our behalf to soothe our worst fears, inclinations, and our worst greed. Nothing that comes forth is without a guardian of light. So you always start and are overseen with incredible power. The only thing is that they will not usurp your free will. And I know it's a tough phrase to hear, but I'm starting to get it and, and it's really becoming quite soothing to me. The thing I've heard since I was a child, everything happens for a reason. And you are not gonna understand it in the moment, but you can have access to some clarity in this time, we are at the greatest potential to really see more clearly, to understand more clearly, to be more broad-minded, compassionate about what is unfolding. And our first thing that we must do is we must keep the doors of our lives open always to options, to possibilities. The end is never the end. The end is just the beginning. Every ending is a beginning. Every ending, every loss is the beginning of a win. Every failure is the beginning of a new opportunity to succeed. This is just the way it is. You've seen it yourself. There is nothing that as long as breath, life is animating our reality, there is nothing that does not continue. We choose we, can, we do have a choice about how we continue. We can continue with living a full life within the means of the circumstances that have occurred, or we can, at, our, at the worst, just drown in our misery. But either way, it's about what you bring to the table, what you decide you are capable of bringing to the table. And so the angels would ask you never to give up. That's what it would mean. <clears throat> and it does not mean to, never give up does not mean that you, if you see that this is an end, that you just keep trying to um, get more out of something that is just over. No, you go where life is flowing and thriving and opening up to you. You don't remain. And this is important when it comes to listening to our intuition, accepting the truth does not necessarily mean defeat. Because again, there, an ending is always a beginning. 
But a real defeat as you would see it would be to stop at that point and, and not explore any other options. That is the only way that you could ever create defeat or failure is to just stop there and to stop living. That is the death that we all fear. But death is just not our mortal ending, our mortal ending. Death is these sort of internal cadences between birth and our mortal death. It's these internal cadences of endings and beginnings. That's what death is. And your fears, your ego projects death constantly to us. And even our mortal death is not the end. It is just the beginning of many beginnings in different realms and different awarenesses. So this death, quote unquote, that we fear only exists if you limit your options. So we spend so much time being afraid of making mistakes because we're afraid of the outcome, the ending, the death, that we will fail, will possibly fail if we make the wrong decision at the big, what is now a beginning. And that fear of a failure or losing something is the least of your concerns. Where you should be focused is understanding that you will if always have a choice. You will always have options. You will you will keep as long as you are breathing in this human experience. You will have to make choices. And choices, and a better way to say it, is that you get to make choices. When you say, I have to make choices, then it's as if you, it's coming from your ego's perspective. It, it's, you know, like you feel, it's like something's forced upon you. But when you think of it in a positive way, I get to make choices. So why be worried about failure? Why be worried about death or defeat or betrayal in a relationship? Why worry about that? Why not focus on the journey? Be happy. Enjoy the person you love. Enjoy the work you're doing. Enjoy your sense of purpose. Be happy. Because the ego will make you worry about death. And you are like a living corpse when you live this way, when you live, when you are worried about failure, when you're worried about losing your possessions because of a choice that you put too much um, anxiety around it. Live. Learn how to live. What it is that you're doing is your, what I've been describing to you is survival. You cannot continue to support this kind of lifestyle. Survival. Focus on thriving. And happiness is your choice by the way you choose to see things. It's your outlook. All right, let's take a look at the archangel that we're working with.
this week. Okay, this is Archangel Bokpi. Uh, <laughs> and as you can see, there are lots of birds around this Archangel. And the Archangel is the Archangel who um, watches over the birds. And it says, the message says, it's time to fly. Listen to your intuition. So the birds have not long been known to be the, when birds are around you, that your angels are speaking to you. So when you hear the messages of the birds, they are singing the tones of the angels. And what I mean by this, they're singing the frequency of creation. They're bringing those ideas, the frequency of those ideas into your consciousness or into the region or the neighborhood or community where they are present. So always know when the birds, any of the bird kingdom is around. And that's why we hear them singing in our morning and some at night and some during the day, that they are singing the tones, the, 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 the sonics of, the, of source and the angels. And the angels break that down, the, the messages from source and then disseminate it through the bird kingdom. And the bird kingdom being at our physical frequency, then tones those sounds that will program our collective consciousness and our individual consciousness, because sometimes we, get a, we find that we get a little bird singing at our window. And the message is um, tonal just the way that music relaxes our bodies or shifts our energy, opens up our chakras. You know, we may feel it in our heart. So take the time when a bird shows up to be open to its tones, to its energy frequency or healing and be aware in your own intuition <clears throat> and consciousness that you might be receiving inner guidance that is being highlighted by the presence of the bird. I'll never forget this when I was um, leaving my spiritual counselors um, we, had to, we always met at different places. Like well, we met at this one apartment. Someone lent her uh, the apartment, and she's now a Catholic priest. And um, we would meet there, and I, you know, have my session. And then afterwards, one day, she said to me, "You know, go to the park, um, and you know, just sit and meditate, and et cetera, et cetera." And so when I left the apartment building and I got to the corner and the park was right across the street. It was in uh, Brooklyn. I can't think of the name of that park, but anyway, um, it's a well-known park. And it, at the corner, all of a sudden, this starling, I think the name of that bird is, with all the little, started going off like an opera singer, just singing these tones. I mean, it was so precise. And everybody just stopped in amazement. He just started all of a sudden and as I, um, be, you know, crossed the street and the crosswalk, he became louder and more emphatic. And then everybody started looking at me. And because as I moved along, he was on, there was a, a brick, a low brick wall. He moved with me. And so everybody was looking. And then I sat down on the bench underneath a tree on the street and the bird behind me just started this, I can only say like a chakra healing or some, 
because he totally put me in another trance. And when I opened my eyes, the city, <clears throat> uh, buildings, the brick apartments and the, uh, the brownstones, everything was a vibrant, rich color. And I could see within the leaves and the bark and even the bricks, the energy moving. I, I can't. <laughs> and what my spiritual counselor told me that I had like a, what she called a paradise moment where I just was just taken into a higher dimension because color was so much more saturated and vivid and literally vivid in the sense of life. I could see life moving through inanimate and animate objects. And then when I just took a deep breath and broke that, it all went back and it was so color, like it's <laughs> so colorless in comparison that it took a long time for my eyes to come back to what is normal because every for a while, for a week or so, it just seemed like everything was really colorless and dingy. And so you just never know the blessings that that might be um, offered to you through the birds. So in this week, it's time to fly. So <clears throat> be aware of the messages that are coming through that are going to really change your life. I just keep seeing the word energy, okay? And um, this was coming through for me this morning as well. And so you may want to, um, <clears throat> um, excuse me, do some he energy healing with yourself. Reiki, anything. Um, I don't know why they're writing imagination, but even, I guess, imagination, you know, our thoughts really do impact us. So you might want to do um, visual imagery as a healing um, tool and a way um, to work with um, the tools of manifestation as well. These are the things they're writing in front of me. Um, I don't know what they're talking about with the electrical, <coughs> but this may also be um, something to do with either electronics. So making sure that you have a space that is as free of electronics or um, so that you can really be in a, a vibration or frequency where you are able to really um, draw upon your own inner um, vibration and healing power. Um, yes. Okay, so let's take a look at the first card for the beginning of the week. And this is the Four of Swords. And so this is usually a card about, you know, just stabilizing your, your energy, stabilizing your mind. So that means, you know, this is not a time to be active in the sense of taking time to really think about um, what's, what's the right thing to do. They're writing the word integrity. So they really want you to align your frequency with integrity. What feels right to you? Instead of just action, action, action. We're not saying don't do anything, but we're saying take the time to figure out what's right for you. Because we're caught up in this herd of, of doing things, uh, compulsions, and keep, keep doing, keep going, you know, no rest, um, this drive that we have. It doesn't allow us, at the end of the day or the end of the week, we don't really know what we've taken in. We know we've done this, 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 and this. We're tired and exhausted. But we feel like there's something that we're missing. There's something else that we were supposed to, to, to get out of this week. And that is a sense of accomplishment um, 
or connection because you want to connect to what it is that you're doing. You want to connect to it in the way that brings balance and brings perspective and, and enlightenment to you and others. It's interesting, this clothesline where the, the swords are hanging. So think about, there's some things that seem to, that need to be, that you need to hang. It's almost like, um, I think in a writing I did with this card, it, it's, you know, like there's certain clothes that shouldn't be put in the dryer. It's, we have all these fast sort of, um, I want to call it fast food um services, fast services kind of thing. And there are certain things that have to be um, allowed to heal, to dry, to happen in, in their own timing. Sort of leave it a little bit more to nature. So this card might be a way about getting back into in tune with your spiritual nature in a sense so that you can hear um, what your heart is telling you and the ideas that it's presenting in your minds or the solutions that will um, come up as a result of it. Okay, and we have the sun card. So I think this is the first time I pulled this card. Isn't this just adorable? I really love this deck. I and mean, if you look at the, the, the frog here, you know, the frog is used to leaping around, you know, being able to to sort of jump over things and, and just bypass. But even that the frog here is finding it, it um, great to just be, not to be leaping here and there, skipping over steps and process. So in this week, don't allow yourself to skip over process over different things, right? We, we, we're we always trying to find that quick result. And this week, you're going to want to slow down. And you're going to find that you're more satisfied and happier. Because when you keep leaping, the the, the thing is to keep putting more things in that free time. So why not just slow down and enjoy the process, making sure that you're doing what's right for you, making sure that you're aligning with what makes you happy, that and aligning with what gives joy and creates harmony for everyone else around you. It's like take that kind of time to bring, to connect with that kind of success. Because at the end of the week, and any in, in, at the end of any week, this is what's most important. How you digest it all. And the way that you digest life in each moment determines the outcome, the kind of ending, and the kind of beginnings that are going to open up for you. This is part of the secret of the laws of the, the laws of attraction. And I didn't want to say it that way it's as if to, you know, pitch a sip, you know, I'm trying to sell it to you like some kind of, um, you know, um, you know what I'm getting at, right? It was a little salesman. I don't want to put it, but this really is the thing that we're all missing. Just like we, it's just in the same way that we don't hear those birds singing sometimes because we have those, our earplugs in, our earbuds in our ears, or we're, we have the earbuds, we don't have the earbuds in, and we're worried to death. We're focusing on this, this ending, this death moment, this anticipated failure. And the birds are singing, the sun is shining. The breeze is cool and is filled with perfume of, you know, 
Or if you live in a city like me, there are buildings, beautiful architecture. You know, there's always something to enjoy. There's always something to appreciate and to enjoy. So the Ace of Wands indicates the universe is bringing some kind of opportunity. Now, or an idea or a shift in some way. This could be something in your career. This, this might be or a, a new goal or a passion that you discover. But the universe is offering you an opportunity for sure. Now, you've got to be open, flexible. You know, your outlook will determine what you see and what you do with what you see, what you are able to visualize or imagine. Because that will determine how much happiness you can gain from this new adventure. So our week is sort of ending with new beginnings. But we have to, prior to this, we have to get our perspective sort of reorganized. You know, sometimes, like, I find myself having to take a moment, the four swords, I often go through in the sense that when I see myself creating more problems, and, and I always give you the thing about my grocery list, you know, my, my, my to-do list, I have this, I just obscure, like there is no rational, <laughs> it's, it's just irrational completely. And what I mean is, you know, I say, okay, today I need to, I guess I, I got to make groceries. Like all of a sudden I just come up with a bunch of things I need to do. I need to make groceries. I need to get this done. I need to get this done. I need to get this done. And the thing is, is, you've heard me say this, none of that stuff needs to be done today. I mean, some of it does, but not all of it. And somehow my ego has just convinces me that it all has to be done right now, right now. Because that is blocking me from something that I might really need, maybe, as I just saw, rest. Maybe a moment to breathe. Maybe a, a moment to do something I enjoy, like, you know, practicing um, or reading a book or, you know, some something that it really needs to get done, but I you know, want to keep delaying it. So it's a time to restructure the way we think is what I think this card is really getting at. Take a moment, breathe, you know, do, use those tools of meditation, visualization. Take a moment to breathe, to restructure the way you see something in a fear-based manner or to reorganize them, seeing the word changes because five is coming up next, right? So you're already anticipating things could go wrong. These changes that are coming up, these, that's all death. That's a concept of death, change, biggest one, all right? And so this might cause you to lose focus. So this is a card about focusing as well, focusing the mind, getting it, getting your perspective right tuning in to that divine message, that higher um, vision, transcendent choices and solutions that are available to you. All right, let's take a look at the card from the bottom of the deck. And <laughs> it's cute. The Eight of Cups. And this is saying, it's time to walk away from some things. It's time to leave some things behind, okay? And this is a card about relationships, 
But this could be anything you have a relationship with, right? It could be the way you relate to yourself in terms of how you tend to do things um, or how you tend to look at things. It could be people. It could be a project, a creative project. But the idea here is you got to know when enough is enough. And that comes from listening to our intuition about anything. And that's another thing, too, that people just override this. That drive, like, causes you to feel like you always got to be running, running, running. Then you don't know how to walk away. You don't know how to listen. You don't know when enough is enough because all you know how to do is run. And what are you running from? Most of the times you don't know. And I just saw the word escaping. You know, shopping, compulsive shopping, um, you know, overworking, avoiding. If you know you're avoiding someone, if you're avoiding a conclusion, you're avoiding saying, you know, I'm sorry, I can't do this. This kind of thing is the reason why busy becomes our default. But that is the ego. And you won't know when you've had a success if you're all you know how to do is run. And plenty of us experience success in our life, but we don't know when it, when it happened because we were running even if we were acknowledging it, but we kept, we were running. Running is what we remember. Running is all we know how to do and running is all we focus on. And you got to know when enough is enough. This project is over. My role in it is done. I leave it to others to complete. They will bring what they're going to bring to it. I can offer no more. My journey begins here now. Just as an example, this relationship is the way it's going right now. It can no longer be. And I have to voice, express myself so that the other person can know how I feel and also give us an opportunity to make that change. That change is still going to be like a death because people's egos are going to be deflated. And without an ego, we feel lost when we've depended on that fear to be in the cold of, of the, the chilling experience of our truth, the sobering experience of our truth, is throws us off balance. But you can get back on track if that's what it takes, if that's what it's meant to be. I don't know why they're writing existence, like existing energy, I guess is what they're trying to say. So they want you to really pay attention to your existing energy, which means stop running so you can stand and listen and receive the messages that are coming to you. Stress is a sign that you're running. It's mental running. That's why you're exhausted. Or emotional running. That's why your heart is heavy. Or spiritual running. That's why your soul is depressed. So stop running. And face what it is. And then accept what enough what is enough and what are the options to fix it to move on etc all right so i send you lots of love and there's one more thing they want you to say this is important work because this is establishing the future the new golden age of relationships the fifth dimensional relationships that we're going to have. We have to stop running, chasing illusions, chasing our tail by the, by the directive of our ego and start trusting the integrity and the clarity of our hearts so that we can have open, easy, fair, communication and just think no matter what issues are floating about 
just how that's going to lighten lighten up the the conversations the 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 way that we try to move forward together all right so have a beautiful week and god bless you